Suddenly, all hell breaks loose. The London Bridge terror attack kicked off. They killed eight people that night and just stabbed 47 within eight minutes. And then he just plunged a knife straight into me. My chest and in my stomach. I've got about seven stab wounds. But I've got slashes all over. My ear was hanging off. I've gone to the ambulance car, banging on the window, the side window. And he's just drove off for me. You had to fight. You had to fight. You had to fight to stop him. I'm glad I did. <laughs> Guys and welcome back to the Blue Tick Show. Opposite me today, I've got Roy Lana, the Lion of London Bridge, the man who stopped the terrorist attack in 2017. Welcome to the show, Roy. How are you? Yeah, I'm alright. Thanks for having me today. Listen, it's a pleasure having you on here. First of all, I want to say thank you for what you've done. Cheers, thank you. Because I don't think what you've done is actually appreciated as much as it should be. No. We had a little chat off camera, and I think we need to all first of all. Everyone in the comments right now, go down and say thank you to Roy because what he done, you saved many people's lives. Yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, they said probably a dozen or more um, lives were probably saved. And it's only like now that I've, that people are coming to me who was actually in that restaurant saying thank you as well. You, you know, you say, quite... you say to me you saved a dozen, but you also need to take into account you've saved a dozen families' lives yeah. as well. Yeah. Because it was 12 individuals, yeah. But if God forbid something more, happened yeah, to them, or more, uh, yeah, their families would be upset. People would be crying. Yeah. You saved way more people. Yeah, and I was very lucky to come out myself of it. So listen, I don't want to jump straight into it. Yeah, I want to understand you a little bit. What yeah. turned you into the lion? What made you jump in, get involved? Where are you from? Um, Talk to me a little bit. Who are you? I come from Peckham. Okay. Um. Yeah, I've lived over there all my life, or around there. Yeah. Um, South East London. Um, yeah, I've grew up all there on a on the housing estate called the Lebury. Peckham's um, a rough area. On the Old Kent Road, yeah. It's a you rough know, area. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, very rough area. Um, being brought up on the council estate. Um, maybe any, yeah. To, any trouble as a kid? Huh? Any trouble as a kid? No, nah, not really. But I suppose on a housing estate, some you know, I mean, you got to yeah. you got to stick up for yourself as well and. Um, but no, as a kid, anything was good. Um, growing up as a kid, um, I was you as a kid quite a lot with my asthma and that. Um, I had very bad asthma where I was in out of hospital quite a lot up to the age of about 10, 11. Um, but I mean, being brought up in a housing state, we had, it's all we had to do, you make the most of it. No, I can imagine. And yeah. obviously, football was a massive part of your life as a kid. Yeah, a Millwall football club, which was probably about half a mile away from where I lived, um, where we used to always go from about eight to ten years old. Yeah, um, yeah we try and bunk in if we could. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. We're not the best team in no, there, but... I think you've got a very... Millwall, especially being Millwall, have a... We're getting better now. We're, yeah. yeah. But as gosh, a kid, we just... We see the floodlights. Um, it's just a team. You either pick your, whatever team and you just try yeah. and stick with it. I think to you, it was more about just being... Part of the football community, I suppose. I don't think yeah. you, wherever you was brought up, I think that's the team you would have supported. It weren't yeah. Millwall, and that was the only way forward. Yeah. It was. I don't think it's like kids now. I think they change. Yeah, now every few years, what, what's the best team? Whoever's winning. Oh yeah, yeah. Ronaldo's there. Oops. Yeah, we're here. We're here. It's, it's crazy. You know, that with a lot of team, a lot of youngsters now. They want to be the winning. Whoever's team. the winning team, yeah, it's always how it is. in life. That's what people want, though. They always yeah. want to follow what's winning. Yeah, but listen, you grew up good childhood upbringing was well. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's Nothing out of the yeah. ordinary, normal? Normal, yeah. yeah. And then, like, uh, mum splits up with my dad. Um, yeah, I've got three brothers. Um, I've got a different dad from my brothers. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, I've had no complaints about it. You just Nothing. get on with life, yeah. Well, listen, there's, there's obviously a part of your life which turned you into the man who thought, okay, it's my turn to jump in and save, save what happened yeah. here. So... Your life may have been normal. Your upbringing may have been fine. Yeah. But what you've done is something that most people look at and think, whoa, hold on. This guy, yeah, I mean, I he's mean, a serious man to be able to do that. Three months before that, I mean, I was, I mean, I've got a 21-year-old daughter. She's 21 next month. Um, Happy birthday to her. Months before that, probably about nine months, I split up with a baby's mum. My life weren't really going too well. Moved back with mum's. Um, moved out with mum's. Because uh, he's a bit old, didn't want to be there myself. <laughs> <laughs> Probably going out a bit more. Yeah. Um, so, like, at the time, nearly terror attack. I mean, I was staying not far from the Borough Market where someone put me in, put me up 
on there, um, they had spare room for us. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and I was, that's why I was down at Borough Market Way a lot. So, someone else helped me. Um, but my life weren't really going brilliantly, just without really ex. Um, probably was a semi little one at the time. Probably it was all over the place. But, as you saw on that night. Um, so, talk us through. It was 2017. It was 3rd of June uh, 2017. Took us from the morning till what yeah, happened? and on the day of the, um, the day of the attack, it was the third of June, two thousand seventeen, um, and I always remember because it was a lovely day, hot day. Um, you had the derby on that day, which as um, I do like a little bet. Yeah. Not if I got even a little bit of money, I just have a silly bets where nothing too mad. But also that night was the Champions League. Um, I think it was Real Madrid. Juventus, you catch me on the spot there. Yeah. I mean, it was a few years ago. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, my life went, uh, but I had a, uh, the day of racing on was Epsom, so I was up early, um, just looking through the papers, things like that. I actually had the winner of the, uh, <laughs> of the derby. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but I only had like a couple of quid each way. Yeah, yeah. So, like, um, nothing, nothing to be too excited. Big. Yeah. Um, and it's only just really um, just hanging about and taking things easy. And mate phoned me and asked me if I fancy coming to watch the Champions League later. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't really going out at the time because so many luck was down. I was standing in someone's ass, which I didn't want to take the piss too much. Yeah. Um, but I went out with my mate, um, and it was in Belmont Market, where we knew people in there anyway, um, because somewhere where just always been going over the years. Yeah. Um, so I've been watching the race and had nice days so like summer's out um, then we met up with mate um, to watch the Champions League um, we watched that I mean if you have, I don't know if you've ever been by the market Never but been. lately it's started being trendy and oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's changed like from being just a market it's more of a trendy place to go in there where they probably charge over the top for the price yeah. of, as um, you can imagine everywhere, everywhere in London it seems to get packed it seems to get more busier the more they charge these days. Yep. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I met up with mate and we watched the football. I mean, the place we was watching it in was just too packed. Um, I left at half time. I went and got a change because I was in shorts all day because where it was hot. And yeah. That. Um, as I went back to the pub, um, we was in, they've already just left. They went round to another pub just around the corner because they was with the manager of that pub watching mm-hmm. it as well. Um, and we just had a few drinks in there where he should look after us a few times. I hope his governor's not looking. <laughs> but um, yeah, and that was that. I mean, and we stayed in there for a few and I think it was about maybe 10 to quarter to 10. We just popped over to the other pub because just across the just across the road. Yeah. Um, it was like a little wine bar restaurant um, because I think his staff was like clearing up for the night. It was about nearly 10 o'clock. Mm-hmm. I think some of them shut about half ten, man, eleven o'clock near the market. Yeah. Um, football just finished, um, and everyone was just like, it was, everyone was just moving away from the market, I suppose, to go home and catch their last trains and things like. That. Um, so we was in the bar. Um, I think it was about, say about quarter of ten that night. I thought I'll have one or two more. Just go home. Yeah, I'm gonna go home. Um, I've only had about five, six pints that night or something like that, but many, and. Um, yeah, and we couldn't see no, um, anything that was happening on. All we see was people running up and down. Now, it's an area where you never hardly get in trouble, even when match, football matches are on. Um, there's never hardly any trouble at London Bridge mm-hmm. or anything. It's one in places now which is just transferred into a nice area for everyone. And, um, but there was a lot of running around. I think it may be just because people were running for their trains or transport home. Um, <clears throat> and how's that? I mean, what we don't know is... Um, from eight minutes <coughs> to I got attacked or to whatever to him, <coughs> there was um, which we now know is a terror attack going on where a van as it <coughs> pedestrians on a bridge mm-hmm. and then crashed into the railings on London Bridge yeah I remember this <coughs> yeah and from there um, they just carried on stabbing people yep um, and we was one of the last places they come into. We could see some convulsion outside, 
because where we was at a bar, we never seen what was going on at the restaurant. We see people panicking in the restaurant, like started jumping up or chilling their plates going. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then they've obviously come to our bit. They've come up a little ramp to our door. Um, and basically tapped me on the shoulder, told me to run. Um, you see people panicking. Um, for some reason, <clears throat> I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, oh, I don't know what else we had. I must be, must be an idiot. I should, I'm like, no, you should have run. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's fake. We don't know if they've got suicide bells yet. It turns out would be fake in the end. Um, but they had big knives and I'm strapped to their... Actually strapped to their yeah. wrists? Yeah. I didn't see it until like afterwards. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, obviously, but they've kicked the, some, one of the um, staff there has rushed over to the door, locked it quick. It's a big um, glass door. But three of them have come up and started kicking in and it bent right under. So they've climbed under. Um, even then, I didn't know whether to react or not because we haven't done anything wrong. We yeah. don't know what's going on. The last thing you know, it's going to be a terror attack. Um, one of them's come up to me, the first one. He started going on about his name. Um, and uh, it's... And then he's just plunged a knife straight into me, my chest and in my stomach, been like succession. So I was sitting on the chair like this. Yeah. I've had to jump up. I've had to start fighting with him. Um, the other one's joining then. The one's got the first one who went past us. He's come back to join. Him. So I've had three of them just like stabbing me, just slicing me. I'm just fighting for my life. Um, I mean, we're talking about half a minute. Yeah, which is a. It's a like, long time. It's a long yeah. time. Especially I mean, when people have got knives. I mean, people get stabbed by the stabber when they're, they're dead. Yeah. Um, I just swing in and fight. Um, just fight for life. But, um, I mean, half a minute has given so many people to get out of the uh, out of the bar area, out of the restaurant, which obviously with me fighting the other two, it's brought the other one back that was going into the restaurant at the time this is what like, I've been told and now shown the CCTV yeah, of course because um, I mean it took me f a few years to see the CCTV um, even people ask me um, did I say them words fuck you Millwall now and I did um, because you can hear it because um, <clears throat> I don't know whether it's because of the Arsenal top I don't know whether one of them had an Arsenal top on or I just don't know what, why you said it but yeah but do you know what I was just fighting for my life. Um, even like six years after, I'm still having trouble with my tendons. Where, um, yeah, I mean, I got stabbed about seven, eight times, slashed all over. I mean, if stuck nice, and pulled things down. But luckily, I'm still alive. Like thing alive. Then I've actually got free, and I've had to run behind this big wall. I've had to run behind it and get out the the door. Yeah. Um, I've only noticed that over the last year when they showed me CCG because it was playing on my mind every time I went there. Was I actually, um, where'd I get out? Where'd I get out? This, but I do know now, I've rushed out the door um, and they must have followed me. But by that time, people have got out there. Um, could be dozens, could be scores of them. Um, there was one other person, I think he was hiding in the, somewhere and they caught him as he went out and stabbed him in the throat. Wow. Um, which, <clears throat> um, yeah, stabbed him, but I know I was the one who got stabbed the most um, and injured. And I've just started walking walking away. I must have been unconscious then, losing a load of blood. I do remember knocking on the pub door where I was originally from. No one would let me in. They probably locked their cells in there as well. Yeah. I mean, from a packed place, to a ghost town within seconds um but i'm pouring the blood i'm unconscious um i did see a police uh, not police an ambulance car um like bottom of the street with lights on all i can remember like it was like vaguely in you know, like i've gone to the ambulance car banging on the window the side window and he's just drove off for me wow because now i know they they can't was he was he was on the first response he didn't know, obviously, I don't know who I am, whatever, so they can't stop. Wow. Um, and that's all I remember, that was the last I remembered, was the ambulance car going away. And then, luckily, um, 
t- next seconds later, I'm hearing shooting, and that's woke me up again, where the arm response must have just turned that corner afterwards. Yeah. Luckily, otherwise I'd have been attacked again, probably. Yep. Um, I've seen other bits of CCTV where the police have tried to respond to them, but they've seen what they've got and backed off until they're called, but it's called Trojan, I say. Yeah, Trojan yeah. team. This video is sponsored by Cranbrook Law, an award-winning immigration law firm. Their talented solicitors can help when any struggles arise regarding immigration law. They can help get you the visas they need. They can help get you the staff you need from any other countries. As you can see, the website is on the screen right now. So if you need anything to do with immigration law, message Cranbrook Law and let them help you. Whether you're looking to obtain a sponsor license, receive advice and guidance in relation to compliance and our civil penalties, or take advantage of our know-how and experience across a broad range of business visas, our talented and dynamic immigration lawyers are available to speak to you. Telephone numbers on the screen, emails on the screen, and hit the link in the bio if you need any help. And thank, thank goodness that, yeah, otherwise then I'd be in tech in, or any longer I'd have been losing blood a lot more. Um, and then I was rushed to Blue Light to um, the nearest hospital in a police car. Apparently, um, I had a bump, I mean, obviously my ribs, I broke my ribs. I've been blown by... All I thought was I've been stabbed in the side. Yeah. That's why I can feel the flashing going on. Um, but they're telling me not to touch my head. My ears, my ears was hanging off. Um, and everything else pouring the blood. But you, it happens so quick you don't so realise... Yeah, in. you don't realise um, it's happening. Um, so I've been rushed to hospital and I'll see then... Um, I don't remember for length for about two days after. Wow. Which, um, I think, but they killed eight people that night. Um, injured, stabbed forty-seven within eight minutes. Stabbed forty-seven Seven within eight minutes. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. Um, yeah, they weren't going to stop. No. I mean, now we know those. Um, hang on, steroids. Um, I mean, I don't know. It probably makes you drilling fearless and that everything else. Um, but they weren't going to stop, and I will come out of it. I survived it. Uh, mentally, it took me about three years after, four years, to get me head back together, um, which was quite dangerous, really, because as a strong person... Um, I can break anyone. It, it did hit me. It did me. Um, even, like, as I say, even going... Um, well, in London, if you go past a mosque on a Friday, you might see like, three blokes sitting there and chatting, and they might have beards on. Yeah. I just crossed the road. Um, things like that. things like that all hit me, um, and that's why I'm glad I met up with your friend Atik. So shout out to Atik for introducing me. Thank you so much, my brother. And thank you, Atik, for having me that day. And do you know what it was? I really enjoyed you, it. I, I tell you what happened. So I reverted to Islam about a year <coughs> and a half ago, and Atik reached out to me and said, "Mikey, you need to get this guy on." He goes, "What was you before?" Nothing. My mum's Christian. Mum, I was born. I was christened as a kid. Yeah. Mum's Christian, but I wasn't practicing nothing. I just listened to my mum. Well, that's that. My mum's Greek. Dad's Turkish. Yes, my dad's Cypriot. Mum's Irish. Greek or English? Greek or Turkish? Uh, Greek. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, I, my mum's Greek from Cyprus as well. Yeah. So I was christened in Cyprus as well. Believe it. Yeah. I think in Cyprus. I think. I think. So. Yeah. I, can't remember. I, mean, I, I didn't know. I, I didn't know it was my dad at all. So a few years ago. Oh, really? Yeah. So, mum, Chris, and me, and then, but I obviously wasn't following anything. It was just whatever my mum told me yeah. to. If we're going to church on a Friday for Easter, we're going well, to church. I mean, but, 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 but my mum's Catholic. And, and, and then, at, when Atik reached out to me, he goes, Mikey, you need to get him on. He goes, because told me a whole story, said that obviously you was scared of Muslims, you yeah. saw them, and you just, you shit yourself, basically. And, yeah. For 100%, if that happened to me, I completely understand that. And I thought to myself, you know what, I want to get this man on, and I want to obviously talk to him, and I want it to understand, like, I want him to understand that, obviously... That's not the Islamic faith. Yeah. That isn't. That's not what we do. That's they. They are terrorists. Yeah. And yeah. that is. But in the situation you're in, of course you're going to think all Muslims are the same. You are. Yeah. That's what. It's, I mean, it's, I it's, just it just brought back memory straight away. Hundred percent. Because I mean, that's PTSD. Yeah. That's what you see. That that's who done it to me. That's him. That's I mean, them. Especially, I mean, being stabbed to death. It, I mean, it's not even the percentage you can put on the minority. No. Like it is. Uh, it is like not even a minority. I mean, as we've been through this with Zeke, and it made me feel like, yeah. And how did you obviously, I'm guessing for 
an X amount of time you obviously thought in your head Muslims are terrorists. Is it that's probably what you um, thought? Yeah, you do. It's, but then you can say things about other religions, like the Catholic Church, where they got caught up with yeah, yeah. all the sex gang. Like you can say they're no, of course. But I'm saying from your, I mean, I've probably like from, from, from what happened with you, when, how did you overcome that that fear of thinking? Like when you said you walk past the mosque, you see the people, you think, "Oh my yeah. God, that is, is is that what they do?" And I know Muslim friends as well. Um, I mean, I treat the altars. Yeah. When I went out there for a day, I'm going in the mosque. Yeah, yeah. For the first time. Yeah. How was it? How did you? How did it feel when you were in that mosque? It felt. It felt strange, but yeah. I'm glad I done it. No, hundred percent. Thank you. Right, and I'm glad I done it, and it was nice. In the end, we had nice food after, um, and we met up with a few more people, and it was just like. Learning just different thing. Like, well, it's not bad. In, it's always bad in some everywhere. Yeah, no, listen, 100%. Every, every um, religion has its own yeah. people who do bad. Yeah. But, of course, in your situation, they were screaming, Allah Akbar, I'm guessing, yeah. and, and X, Y, and Z. So, yeah. in your head, you're automatically putting them to do with the Islamic faith, and that's what's caused the... I mean, as you know, like, like an idiot, I was shouting back, because that was like my religion. Yeah. <laughs> like, you are me a wall. <laughs> no, I hear that 100%. But no, listen, I'm glad that you overcome that as well. And yeah. I don't, I don't, as much as you've overcome it, I don't think you will ever be 100% over that because that's a part of your life that, that's why you're sat here today. Yeah. At the end of the day, yeah. it's, it's a chapter of your life that will never, ever leave yeah, when, you. Yeah. Like, uh, when you said like, interest coming, I mean, I didn't say, yeah, yeah, we just tried to find a date and we've done it quick. Even you, when you come in, you said, I can't believe six years on, people still want to know. Like, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's gone mad. Where I mean, after I mean, the after effects, effect, let's go out. The after effects affect me with post traumatic stress disorder. I mean, me tendons are never going to be hundred percent. I mean, you can build them up. Um, you had, I don't think it's never going to be hundred percent as well. You're going to still have your your days backwards. Yeah, of course. Not just with that, with who's done it or whatever. Just myself. I mean, I used to get the ump quite a lot. And I don't know why I used to do this, but I used to, maybe I'm doing something on my phone. Or this, that. I used to pick the phone up, but I used to fight the telly. Instead of throwing it at the wall, or just breaking your phone, I'm probably just smash the tellies as well. Yeah. And um, I've done the same again about two years ago, like my girlfriend's house. Done the same sort of thing again. So it's, it is still there, where you can have the ump quick, whether that's flashback sort of thing, or, yeah. I, I mean, but apart from that, I'm, doing, I'm going in the right, Step away upwards instead of going backwards. What's going on, guys? This video is sponsored by London Steel Services Limited, based in Hertfordshire on the A10. No job too small, no job too big. Anything to do with metal, these are your guys. Make sure you hit up London Steel Services Limited. All their information is on the screen right now. They offer crazy lead times, 24 to 48 hours on builders, beams, and small fabrication jobs, flatbed and 45 to 90 foot crane high ab deliveries. The jobs they get involved with are barn conversions, extensions, loft conversions, new builds. They can survey, design, supply and install steel or simply just supply. Whatever you need, they're here to help. I think every day that goes past is gonna, it's, a, it's you're gonna improve. Listen, you're not, Yeah. You, now six years on, you're obviously in a lot better position than you was a year after. Yeah. And yeah. how how was it when you watched the CCTV? Because there's there's vision in it and there's remembering I mean, there's, it and then there's watching it. Yeah, and then there's a lot of then thinking a bit of police, why haven't you shown me that before? Why did you let me go through so many years? Why did they say they took so long to show you? I don't know. I don't I really don't know. Um why not tell me something? Because on the inquest, um, on the second day of the inquest, they showed me myself getting stabbed. I should have been there watching it, not reading about it in the papers the next day. Yeah. Right? And then they showed me a little bit again. Then they showed me other bit where, I did, as I said, I'd come out, what door I come out. It just plays in your head as you walk past that place yeah, every day. You want to know how, how did, did I come I out that door? Did I come out that door? Was that door locked? They showed me that. And then I, I still don't know from that road. Well, I do know now because obviously... I know people in the pubs there and shops where they looked at their CCTVs and they said, I walked down that road. Mm -hmm. Where the police said, I don't know why you went. I don't know why. If I killed someone, then they probably, they know what way I went in. Um, I mean, then I can't blame them, all of them, because if it weren't for the two that took me straight to hospital. You might not be here today. Yeah, I'd probably have been dead. Um, 
I mean, afterwards, I was a lot uh, angry at me, um, things like that. I had a go at the um, MP, local MP, and he got me banned from the... Got you banned? Mm, from, from what? every Southwark building. Because I was, I wanted help. I was crying out for help. And they got you banned? Yeah. He got me a Nixon ban. Um, for having to go at him. Um, I said something to him. Um, yeah, just, I don't know. Then I was under... The, um, probation, I reckon I said something. I used to go on a prevent course, which is a prevent, it's a, a police unit that stops or tries to stop or people joining terrorist organisations uh, or, or the other way around. Right. Okay. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Because after the um, terror attack, there was two big marches in there, Football Lads Alliance. Yeah, yeah. I think they'd done a um, um, couple of marches. I didn't go on them. One second, sorry. So you stopped the terrorist attack. Yeah. And they've put you on a prevention Pre- course. Yeah, prevent course. Prevent. That makes no sense. No, nah, it's just, it's mad. They were saying it's because I said. Um, I think it is more because of other things going on. Yeah. Other people were trying to get hold of me then. Even like the politics I had, like through, like say Tommy Wood. Well, yeah, 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 like, yeah. I mean, I just didn't go on any march, the marches. I mean, I'm just, I'm still in a different world, yeah. like midwise, where, not in a good world, I should be like, I should be on top, I should be top of the world, like what I've yeah. done. I wasn't, I was like feeling rock bottom where I need help, I was crying out for help. I've just been through a major incident where it's I'm, life not right, I'm not right in my head. No, it's life changing I'm as well. scared like, as well, in case it's happening again, or um, things like that. Um, and as time goes on, you do, it does get better. It does get better. You got, I think, like myself, I've done a lot of it myself, and got through it myself. Um, you got to, because I've been on, I have to wait for the um, psychiatry things. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, then they just come out the same things, fight and flight. I think if I had a bit more time, a bit younger, I think I could be qualified. <laughs> yeah, but I think I could be a qualified person within a year or two. Yeah, yeah. And I think I'd probably be good at it. Um, where. I'm just really reading out the book of what thing I'd like go through the person who's suffering and look like deep into them, I think. And how was your family after this situation? Um Were they there? I mean with family, I mean I'm I mean I've just split up my girlfriend and the baby's mum nine months before. So I was having problems there. I've just moved out my mum's um I didn't really talk to my brothers like I mean I just yeah, and, um, and I said about my dad, I only knew over the last f- about a year or two before that, that I had a different dad than my brothers. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So you only found that out a year before? A couple before? of years before that, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, which, obviously, we just talked about yeah, yeah. some Cyprus and that, which um, he died about two years ago now. Which, Sorry to hear. Yeah, through COVID and that. But um, I just got on my own thing. So, like, after that... Um, I think my daughter was a bit embarrassed about all the attention I was getting. Um, but, things, but then the ex put me up for a couple of weeks after, helped me there, yeah. so I got somewhere. Um, and then I moved myself away down to the coast. Um, there was a GoFundMe, which went around. A um, bit of money, because I don't know what to say. They, they put me in a, as soon as I left hospital, they put me in a little, os- little room, because um, they have to do that now. Yeah. When you leave hospital, they have to find you somewhere. Um, but I went and bought a caravan down the coast. Um, maybe I shouldn't have done there where I was probably isolated more. And it's probably... But you probably just wanted time alone as well. You wanted yes, time to, yes, so, to just chill out and focus on I mean, yourself. The best thing was just to probably go away out of Cyprus for a month and relax on the beach. Do you know um, what it is though? A lot of people say that, that, that in your head you're probably thinking that's the best thing. But I think the best thing probably would have been for you was to have your family around you. Mm. To have a support circle. Yeah. Whereas I'm pretty, I'm pretty like you. Whenever something goes wrong, I want to be alone. Yeah. Everyone leave me alone. It's yeah. my problem. I'll deal with it. Yeah. Because you just go for a long walk and you, you get over it. But in reality, it's the worst thing to do. Yeah. Because we, I think we, we're a little bit we're similar in that aspect of life where something goes wrong. In your head, you think it's my problem. Leave me alone. I'll deal with it. I'm a big man. I don't need no one. But yeah. in reality, you always need someone. Yeah. You always need people always around need us. Someone, yeah. But I was on edge. I couldn't even yeah. look at people, talk to people. Even you probably didn't trust no one. No, nah, not even mum. I couldn't even look at my mum and have a conversation yeah. with her. It was, it was weird. It was horrible. Um, but I was down the caravan. I moved down there. I kept myself. I had things. 
in the end, I started smashing things. Um, got to me. I didn't want to sleep. I wanted to help. Um, I had complex post traumatic. I've had five assessments. Yeah. There's still no help. Seriously, it's bad. It you was, think after what you've done for yeah, the country, yeah, everyone be trying to help you. Yeah, I mean, and have the government not helped you in any way at all? No, nah, no, nah, no nothing. financial, nothing. No, nah, nothing. I mean, I only just got a flat about a year and a half ago now. Um, that's, what's that? Four and a half years after a terror attack. Wow, um, wow, wow! You'd think, you know, like you'd think if something like that happens, the government first thing they do is they'll reward you. With, I don't know. They'd look at your current situation and think, okay, yeah. does he need a house call? Let's help him with that. Or they'd just help you in any sort of way. There's a lot of things there. I mean, there's a lot of lies which they've yeah. done and the police done and things like to look up, like cover their cells. I mean, there was three police officers that got the top bravery awards ever, George Cross. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's a George Cross situation. I think a George Cross situation is an hostage. Yeah. Like siege. Where, okay, I mean, it's one of them nights that you you never forget it and never be out of people's memories. Um, but if them same police done the same thing in just a local street up here, yeah, they wouldn't have got that award. No, it's just because it's been in London Bridge. There's so much press coverage, yeah. and they got that within. Like, yeah, think, yeah. And, and straight away they're getting awards. It, yeah, it's it's wrong. Whereas you, what you done? Yeah, stood up. Took you probably saved so many people. You put your own life on the line. Then police had guns. They're, yeah. They probably shot them from a hundred yards. They got guns. They got tasers. They got. They, 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 none of them got touched. None of the police got hurt. I mean, I've done this. I mean, I've got <coughs> out of there, especially with caravan up. Um, I had a little bit of amphetamine where I didn't want to sleep. That was my little. You didn't want to have the mem- the dream. Nah. I'm guessing. I could have getting help. And when I smashed the van up, please come. And I got mixed with um, amphetamine, which. I was on my mind for two weeks. You was on uh, remand for it? Yeah, I was on my mind for two weeks. No it's way, that's actually yeah. remanded you for Three it. weeks it was, yeah. It was like... Let's talk about even it. though you've told them this is a situation, yeah. like, they yeah. remanded yeah. you. And even I had the prevent people that were still in touch with me, they didn't help me, none of them. Wow. Um, and I mean, it, just, it just goes on where, when I put in the claim for my criminal injuries... They've turned me down because of that that nicking, because it's called unspent convictions, which I'm still fighting for to this day. Um, it's gone to the Supreme Court. I'm still finding. I'm trying to find a loophole where. Wow, that's that's. that's... It's crazy. It's crazy. It is crazy, but it's true. It's whether I get it or not, I don't know. Um, last early this year, there was some a little bit of a a little bit of. Um, cheer me up was I was awarded with a bravery award okay it's called the Royal Humane Society silver medal yeah um, which was pers- um, which was Princess Alexandra um, it's well approved so hopefully things are going and there's still um, there's still um, what do you mean there's still someone's put me up for the George Cross so you can anyone can write in there um, nominate me for the George Cross. So how do they do that? They could do that through the honours. Let the viewers know how to do it. You so can um, nominate me for the George Cross. Is there like a link or website they got to go on? If you go to honours.gov, yeah. it's on the government website, and just nominate me for the Bravery, Bravery is, Award. Is your name there? You have or to put they... my name in. I, I um, nominate Roy Lana for the George Cross. All right, guys, what I'm going to do, we're going to make it a lot easier. There's gonna I'll be send a, you the... There's going to be a link in the bottom. If you scroll down to the description, there's a link there. Click this link. And write in there. I'll even write what to write. Just copy and paste. I nominate. And I'll put yeah. your name there. Copy and paste it. Let's make him win this award, people. Let's do it together. Yeah. I mean, look, if, we get, if we get the George Cross, and then SDI's Bravery Award, you yeah. can get. And then it's a bit of conversation for that. Um, in the meantime, I mean, I've just plodded along. Last year, this was the sixth year of anniversary. The fifth year anniversary, um, I decided my head was getting a little bit better. After four and a half years, I decided to put social media back on. Yeah, um, I'm not really in, into a lot of it because uh, over the years, obviously, a big battles with things. But I put it on, <coughs> put it on again, and I'm just suddenly inundated with so many messages from all around the world, really, <coughs> um, all around the world, all different faiths, all different whatever, um, all good. And I had three authors as well uh, contact me. Yeah. 
Um, they wanted to do my wanted me to do a book of it. This book here. Yeah. Um, <coughs> there was two two other ones, two other authors, but I didn't really want to take them up on their offer. This bloke here is a ghostwriter, Dean Rinaldi. Um, he's based in Turkey, and we actually done it, and it made me feel good because I started getting in a bit of help about six months before that, where I had to go over things about the attack. Yeah, yeah. So it helped me then, then to write the book. To get a bit more of an understanding yeah, of it. Yeah, it made me a little easier talking about it again in the book. <coughs> and then... Uh, Is this book purchasable? It's purchasable on Amazon. On Amazon, yeah? Yeah, it's okay. on Amazon. Um, it's called The Line of London Bridge. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going all right. I'm just trying to get it into a store or even bigger, maybe into a film. Yeah, that'd be um, Yeah. There's things that take time. And that'd be a little bit of compensation back. I tell people the right truth about things, and it'd be be nice. But at the same time, I have still got to worry about take step by step. Still, don't go too far ahead. I try to give something back as well if I can. Yeah. Um, you want to give something back? How much more do you want to give back? <laughs> Look at what you've done for the the, the country. Yeah, but. And I don't um, think people actually take into account what you actually done. Yeah. Like, there was a terrorist attack. We need mm. to actually take it in and actually... You know, I've been trying this new thing. I'll yeah. let you know what I've been trying in life. I was, I was watching... It was basically, it was a TikTok clip. And it says, whenever you're discussing th- something, just simplify it. Yeah. Because so many people look at it, oh, terrorist attack, they crashed into it. Just simplify it. There was a group of guys who come to kill people. Yeah. You stood up and stopped them killing people. Yeah. When you put it like that, you think, fuck me, look at what this man actually done. Yeah. So many people say, oh, they come, they were screaming this, they try and mix religion. Forget the religion, forget yeah. all of it. It's yeah. nothing. There was three men who come and they come to hurt people. Because I mean, as I now know, through chatting to the police and um, afterwards, they was planning to go to Oxford Street yeah. um, to do a major um, thing with the van at the time. Um, and obviously, they just see the crowd coming out after the... Uh, the Champions League match. Yeah, yeah. And they must have thought... Perfect timing. Yeah. Um, which was that... I mean, there was another one on the bridge two years after on that day release. A couple of them on day release. Oh, yeah. In the Fishbun Gazelle. Um, the bloke with the fire extinguisher. So they... I mean... It's everyday life. You say... You still go through life that... Don't worry about it. It ain't going to happen. I mean, you're probably more likely to get robbed or stabbed and yeah um, but you can't, you still go around your normal day life you've got to in life so you know when you're sat at restaurants now yeah. and you hear a, a plate drop does it still give you the that not so much now I mean like fireworks like that does yeah the bang's there or if I'm a bang it does make me jump um, afterwards I couldn't go near the doors of a pub I used to move away a bit yeah or near windows as you say um, that did put me up. Large, large crowds at football. I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. Everything was just too much for me. Too and, much, yeah. and it was enjoyable. Um, and people, I thought it was enjoyable because people want to talk about it. I'm missing after the game. Um, you can't tell them to. Because <laughs> it's something people want to talk about. Yeah. Um, and it has got, over the years, it's got more and more people now talking about things because... After six years, there's probably younger people there that probably didn't yeah. realise it, then realise there. And there's videos um, on YouTube of it as well. The yeah. videos went viral, hundred, millions and millions and millions yeah. of views because it was in central London, London yeah. Bridge. It's a London thing. Yeah. It's, what, what, what I want to ask is, the day you're sat there in that in that restaurant and you've decided to, like you said, fight or flight. Yeah. Most people get up and run. Yeah. What was the thought in your head that said, you know what, I'm going to get up now and I'm going to take these people head on? I was waiting and I think it was just that first stabbing, that first stab that hit me. But what, why did you stay there? Because everyone else got up and run. What made you want to sit there and think, you know what, let me... Because look, the set, people here, people see a man with a knife and they run. Yeah. They maybe, run straight away. I'd, maybe I was just blind to it, it was a terror attack. But even forget the terrorist attack. Yeah. Let's just say, you, you saw him with the knife, right? Yeah. Well, why did you stay? Because I thought it was just, we've done nothing wrong. We're just sitting there having a pint. Minding your own business. Yeah. Um, they're probably looking for someone or they've... And you never get any ugly trouble around there. And it just... And then you had to fight. 
yes, I thought, yes, I thought I'd stop him. And glad I did. Um, and then there was two of them. And then he, he brought the other one back, um, the third one, um, which <laughs> I was talking about. <laughs> but it's one beating. I'm probably happy now. I can say that, yeah. How many I've, stab wounds was it in total? I've got about seven, I think seven stab wounds. But I've got slashes all over. My ear was hanging off. Um, I, saw, I saw pictures. Yeah, I mean, they're slashing at my head. They were stabbing me. I mean, they've, they've even got him with a knife and pulled, like, down me, like, say my tendons. Um, I've still got my looks. <laughs> no laugh. Um, but it's the, as I said, being through, like, the mental side of it. As a strong person, I didn't think that would hit me, but it did. Well, um, look, I, I sit opposite you today, and I, I, I think you're, you're a champion. Yeah, and I'm glad that I feel good in myself where I've come back from it, but still not so, go too forward. Yeah. You're going to have them days where... You're only human. You're only human. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, no, touch wood, there's never any more terror attacks or... But it, you know, it's going to be, I mean... You can't stop all of them, I suppose. You can't stop that. And what's the, what's the future hold for you now? Uh, you're in a position in your life where I see you're recovering. You're in a, a mm. I can imagine, a 10 times better state than you was then. What's the yeah. future? What's, what's your plans? Let's I say. mean, I'd love to go back to work again. I don't think... What was you doing before? I was a printer. Okay. I mean, the printing games died. Yeah? Um, Social so, media? Yeah. Yeah, it's all, all died down. I don't know, maybe do a bit of driving or something. Um, but still another six months, a year off things. I'd love to get my compensation and go and relax somewhere. <laughs> Listen, I, 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 the problem is though, I don't know what figure they're going to put on it because you're you're owed lives. You're owed. Yeah. You, you you saved how many lives? Yeah, it's probably down. Uh, I'd say dozens, probably more. Um, Listen, let's just hope that that the government step up because they need to. They need to step. They up. need to. And you, like MPs that need to step up. Um, it's crazy, but just take, but I'm in the right frame of mind, not to jump at things, not to just do it the right way around there, and just try for my best. And also, yeah, don't get frustrated about things if you don't get it. Just keep on or do something else, or try and give something back to help with some charity. That if there's another ever terror attacks or things like yeah. that, I'm in the right frame of mind where I've been through all this. Hope no one else goes through it, which is it's good. Uh, listen, I, I, that's why I like doing these podcasts as well because I get to meet people like you, yeah. of course, and obviously the viewers can help as much as possible in like voting for you, buying your book, yeah. showing you support. And I think your story is a story that needs to be heard by millions. Yeah. And the praise that we can give you is is we, we can't praise you enough for what you've done. Yeah. A lot of people are going to say, oh, all he done was all he done was get stabbed. No, no, no. Yeah. You, I mean, you saved. Eight, it's eight. Like, Seven eight uh, families out there, they've lost their loved ones. Yeah. As you said before, um, you can't bring that back. No, you can't bring it back. You can't bring that back at all. Um, yeah, I'm lucky. I'm, I'm getting my life back together. And, yeah, and just help, maybe help, give something else out, help out there or something. And Listen, be nice. all, I, all I can say is I look forward to the future of what, what, what it holds for you. Yeah. I hope that there, that never happens to anyone. Yeah. Forget about forget about you a second. I hope it never happens to anyone again. Because it's no one deserves that. Yeah, I always say that I hope, I, mean, I hope it never happens. But we live in a life where you know it's gonna happen and it's gonna be worse yeah. each time. Yeah, yeah, it's a shit shit. I mean shit in world. in England um we haven't had the guns yet, like in France. Yep. That would happen next. England's think, getting worse and worse. Yeah, I think so. And I think the roads are getting hungrier and hungrier with what yeah. the government's doing. There's there's no money yeah. left on the roads. No. I think robberies are going to go through the roof. Yeah, I think gun, get, stabbings yes. are going yeah. to go through the roof. Gun crimes are yeah. going to go through the roof. And as bad as it sounds, I blame the government. And it's these innocent people to get out of it. Yeah, it, only the innocent. Yeah, yeah. I think it, and in my eyes, it is somewhat the government's making it too hard for people. Yeah, it, the only option they're giving people is to turn to the life of crime. Mm. I mean, I'm lucky that it did take me f- about four years to get over the thing. Well, not over it, but. It's getting me head slowly back together. I mean, that's how bad with the mental health issues are. Or um, maybe not mental health, but the post... I, I had, PTSD. Uh, yeah, I had post but there's probably people out there that's got mental health issues where, yeah. as you say, it will, life will get worse in London. And 
England, really. All we but, can say is, I'm glad that you're here today. Yeah, and it was nice. I say on the anniversary this year, um, a girl got in touch with me. Oh yeah, who was in the restaurant? Oh wow. Um, sent me a text which I put in the book. And the coding, it says, um, "Thanks to you, I'm still alive today." And I thought it was one of the rest. I thought it was one of the restaurant staff or something. But it was actually a girl that's just her dinner's just gone down with her with her mate. Her dinner's just been put Place, in front yeah. of her, and then it all started. Wow. And she was in full. But I went into I went to Paris with the paper, with the Sunday Mirror this year, and met her for the first time. And like, how was that? Very emotional. Very emotional. And that's probably when it actually hit you, and you thought, "Wow, yeah. I helped this. Pe- yeah. I helped then, people." Because yeah. so I knew, then I can talk to her and ask, "Where come I never knew about all this before." Or how come they never ask you to go to the um, inquest and yeah. give the full detail of of things? Um, and she said full volume, full um, view of it all, and it was nice. Then words were, yeah. So I've done something good. Even if you help just that one person, yeah. I think that alone in itself, hearing that person say thanks to you, that's the reason I'm yeah. alive today. Your job's complete, kind of thing. That's yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, that's... I've done it. I've helped myself, and and there's other people there that have done this. Hundred um, percent. Yeah, it's good. It is good. Because, as I said, these people lost their lives. You can't bring that back. Um, lucky I've did And, yeah, I feel proud of myself. No, you should. And yeah. genuinely, I, I think it's been a pleasure having you here today. And my next stop is El Batik, when he helps the homeless this year. Yeah? I think they're doing that this year. I'm going to come down to that as well. I'll give yeah. you my word, I'll be there. Yeah, we'll be So we'll meet, we'll meet yeah. up again there. Definitely. Attic, once again, thank you, Attic, for hooking this up. Yeah, thank you. Without you, Cheek. I wouldn't have met this champion of a man we'll all sit down when we go up there one day yeah, and have some man. food together yeah. and we'll probably make a day of it I was going to say a pint but obviously you can't <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to say um, no I've enjoyed like today talking to you thank you for having me on appreciate it now, listen it was a pleasure meeting you as well definitely and um, when, I, when I do get the George Cross hopefully yeah, let me we'll know. come back and do part two no, we'll definitely make you win that I'll make, guys yeah. make sure you scroll down do exactly as I told before and I look forward to seeing you again Roy pleasure having you Man, on the show thank you you're welcome I look, yeah. look forward to seeing you again Thank you, you're welcome.